Hey, what's up guys? Chris and CT Golf Reviews here, wrapping up the season at Whitney Farms Golf Course in Monroe, Connecticut. It's freezing cold, about 40 degrees. It's in the morning, it's windy, and I'm drinking iced coffee because I live in New England, so let's get out there and play. Interesting poster that they've got here on the wall. I'm gonna try that next season. It's gonna take a while, but I'm gonna try it. It's 45 degrees outside, and I'm drinking iced coffee. That's how you know I'm from New England. This is the first time in like three weeks I've played golf, and uh, it's affecting me. Definitely not shooting the shots I need to. Whitney Farms is a public golf course in Monroe, Connecticut, right off of Route 188, over by Jones Farm, which is a great spot here in Connecticut for pumpkin picking and Christmas tree getting and all of your holiday needs. But Whitney actually reminds me a lot of Oxford because it runs through neighborhoods. As you can see, there's houses and stuff up there. Uh, very long course. You're not going to get through this in three hours, even on a dead day like it is right now. But it is a very beautiful course, very scenic, and it was actually the reason why they call it Whitney Farms. It was built on an old farm. Alright, time to replenish on golf balls. Gotta go into the woods and look for them. Oh, I just tigered that last par three. So, I'm not really too proud of that. I'm playing like garbage today.
So, round so far, it's it's decent. The course is pretty difficult. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is colder. I haven't taken wind and I haven't taken harder ground into consideration and I really think I should be. Otherwise, I am having a good time. The two guys that I'm playing with are great guys. Uh, so shout out to Levi and Bill, if you see this. And uh, yeah, I'm halfway there. So let's go to the back nine. You've got to be kidding me. That ball and I hit it from those trees over there, like dead through the trees. It was literally the greatest golf shot I think I've ever done and I didn't get it on camera. Wow. You know something, I, I, I try to be fair when I play, right? So my ball wasn't dented into the ground, so I took it out and put it right next to the end and still crappy lie. You play by the rules, you should be able to, you know, play well, right? As you saw, no, not at all, nope. Go, 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 go! Oh! One thing I gotta say about this course is the par fives are long. We're talking like 500 plus yards. All right, guys, last hole here at Whitney Farms before I tee off. You know the deal. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, do whatever you got to do. This is the last hole of the season. I'm not going to be doing any more course reviews until the weather starts getting better. So this is it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I make par or maybe even birdie. That'd be cool, too.
So much for a birdie. Alright guys, that wraps it up for Whitney Farms in Monroe, last course of the season. Time to go back and do the review. Alright guys, let's get into the review for Whitney Farms in Monroe. I right off the bat want to say thank you to the course for letting me play. Everybody there was fantastic. I had a great time. Let's get into it. The reviews are, I'm actually, believe it or not, this is going to be really simple. Staff is going to get an 8. Everything else is going to get a 7. There. That's, you know, all right, see you guys later. No, no, I'm just joking. I'm going to talk about it. But uh, staff's going to get an 8 because I enjoyed everybody that I talked to. I the, the people that were in the clubhouse, the starter, Dennis, who every time I go there, he's got a cigar hanging out of his mouth. Uh, they were all really cool guys. Dennis actually uh, recommended that I get the cheesesteak that they serve in the grill. And then the woman that I met, oh my God, what was her name? I don't remember her name. But the woman in the grill was really nice. We had a great conversation. Showed her some card tricks. They make a banging cheesesteak. I tell you that right now too. It is up there with the cheesesteaks that I've had. So the food is very good. And I really hope that they're able to see this. You know, I was talking in the clubhouse with, uh, I believe, I forget what the guy's name was. I'm drawing a blank on all the names except for Dennis, who was the, the, the starter. And I only remember him because he had the cigar. But we had a good half hour conversation just about golf and about, you know, when I used to work at Golf Galaxy and, you know, just opinions on things and the masters and all that. So great guys. Staff is going to get an eight. I'm going to give the layout a seven. Because the layout, it's a very long course, but it's a very well um, thought out course. You saw on the scorecard in the beginning of the video, and if you have to pause and go back, go and look at it. Um, it is a pretty decently long course because there are holes that just go one after another. It's not like it goes up and back. The front nine goes through a neighborhood. The back nine is more country. The front nine has a lot more narrow shots because of the fact that it goes through a neighborhood. I wasn't able to film the, the neighborhood. I didn't want to. There were kids playing. There were people working on their yards. It's a whole privacy thing. I wasn't going to get into that, so I wasn't going to film that. That's why you saw more of the back nine. But the, the holes, you have to really plan out your shots. Some are dog legs. A lot of them are straight on. The par threes are pretty good. They're straightforward the par th what is it the the fourth hole is a par three and the green which by the way none of the greens are flat they're all like hilly and they're all domed so you got to be really careful with your shots but they're almost perfect if you figure out the the pace of the greens you're golden all you have to do is read them and get good putts but the back of the the fourth green just drops off into the woods the seventh hole is that downhill that you saw all of the you know the pretty uh the scenery and the rest of the course and which i'll get into with scenery but that's another one where you have to be careful because you got houses here and houses here you've got some holes where they're a little bit more narrow you've got some holes where it's wide open you got some holes where you got to watch out for sand you got some holes where you got to watch out for water it's got a little bit of everything but the best part is it's not a difficult layout it's one of those things where you step on the tee box, you look out, that's my target, boom, hit a driver, smack it, there you go, keep playing your shot, unless you're like me and you slice the ball, all right? It, I'm, I'm a hack golfer, I suck, and I play even worse in the wintertime, which is why I'm ending the season now, because it's getting cold out there, and as you saw, I'm from New England, I'm in a hat and two sweatshirts, and I'm drinking iced coffee. But it was cold, and my right hand was getting cold because I had the glove on the left hand. Otherwise, great layout. Great constructed course. Bunkers are in the right spots. They don't get too far in the way. The tee boxes are really well maintained. Everything was labeled, which is another thing. The only thing that I would change, and I will say, the, the yardage markers are on the cart paths instead of the fairways, which I feel like if they were on the fairways, it would be a little bit easier to, to track and maintain. Um, 
only because I know if people are going to be walking, they're not going to be walking on the cart paths. They want something softer on their feet, so they're going to walk on grass. That's the only thing I'd have to change. Otherwise, it was great. So, seven for the layout. Scenery as well gets a seven. It's a beautiful course on the back nine. It would have gotten an eight if it was a little bit more scenic on the front nine, but again, there's houses. Ironically, though, I say that, and the best looking part of the course is hole seven, where you go down that hill. It's a par three, about 220 yards, I think it was, and you've got this opening in the background, and you see the driving range in the first three holes, and then you've got the pond, and you can see the sun going down over the hill and the, the, the pine trees that go along the fairways. It was gorgeous. And my phone, my LG Style 5, which is what I used to film all of this on, does not do it justice. You have to be there. And I can say that about a lot of the course. My filming does not give it justice. I try as hard as I can. Unfortunately, I don't have the best equipment, but next season, I will have the good equipment. I got myself a drone. I'm getting better cameras. I'm going to get a clip on mic. Everything is going to be better. The video layouts are going to be a little different. I've got ideas up here, guys. I'm hoping that they work out. The only thing is I'm still going to be using my own stuff because I'm not paying for another dude's greens fees when he's not even going to be playing. The course does not look the way it does on the camera. It looks better. Again, the layout would have... No, I'm sorry. The scenery would have gotten an 8 if it wasn't for the fact that there's neighborhoods in the way of the, of the, the first front 9. Everything else is gorgeous. It's one of those things where it screams country. You've got farms around you. You've got a pumpkin patch, an apple cider farm, a Christmas tree farm around the area. So it's like you look at the course and you're like, yeah, that belongs here. So scenery is going to get a seven. Difficulty as well is going to get a seven. I had a very easy time on the fairways. The roughs aren't too bad. The only thing is it's a narrow uh, skill needed course, if that makes any sense. Remember how I said it's, you know, the, the layout's okay where it's basically straight on where you can step on the tee box and say, okay, there's my shot, hit it. Some of the shots are narrow. You got to be able to hit straight. You got to be careful with your shots. The only thing that I've got to say that will affect your game is that the greens are not flat, like I had said when I was talking about layout, but I'll get further into detail. We're talking domed greens at the very end, so the ball will roll off. Fortunately, though, they're not lightning fast greens. The best way that I can describe these greens were they were the same structure as Oxford, but without the speed as Oxford. You know what I, you know what I mean? So, they're hilly, you definitely have to read them, but you're not going to tap the ball and have it go 20 yards and then end up in the rough. So, you're, as long as you can basically figure out the, the roll and the, the pace of play with the, with the greens, you're fine. And if you can read greens, even better. That's probably the, the, the thing that I had the most difficulty with was the greens, but mainly because my short game is absolute garbage, and my iron games are actually getting worse, man. I either got to get fitted for new irons, or I just got to take lessons and figure out what I've got, because you guys have seen my irons. They're not good. I also noticed, too, the grips on my clubs. That makes, that makes the difficulty, too, is if you're playing... If you're, if you're playing in cold weather, your ball is going to travel differently. Your grip on your clubs is going to be different. So a lot of things come into play. For anybody who thinks that this game is not hard, you're wrong. So difficulty is going to get a 7. Other what, guys, I, I have nothing bad to say about the course. I, I had a very, very good time. Shout out to the two guys I was playing with, Bill and Levi. I hope you guys see this. I hope you guys are, are doing well. I remember, it's it's weird, I remember almost everybody that I've played with. When I look back at my videos, because I mean, I don't watch my videos after they're on YouTube, but when I'm editing them, I, I think, and I'm like, you know, it was a cool dude right there. Like the, like the guy I was playing with at uh, Sleeping Giant, Chris, great guy. I remember the two people that I was playing with at Minor Hills. They were amazing. I believe it was um, Bob and Cynthia. I remember these people, because I feel like golf is, you know... It, it, you get a better experience if the people that you're playing with are, are cool people. So, shout out to Bill and Levi. Guys, my overall score for Whitney Farms Golf Course in Monroe, Connecticut, 
And this is going to be a pretty impressive score because let me tell you something, I wasn't expecting to give it this, especially after the last time I was there because I played one hole and left because I waited an hour. 7.8. 7.8 for Whitney Farms. I'm, I'm impressed. It's a very good course, guys. If you are in the area, if you want a really nice PGA caliber course that you can play on where you've got great people that you want to, you can talk to and deal with while you're there, I would suggest Whitney Farms. Not a complaint. The only, no, I can't say that. The only complaint I have is the fact that you do have to wait a while, but it's because it's packed because it's obviously, it's a good course. That's just about it, guys. This is the last review of the season. I know I've said that like six or seven times by now. But I want to thank everybody for watching, for subscribing. I've got a lot more stuff planned. Share this with your friends and family. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Get all the notifications. When I put up new things, you will know it gets sent right to your phone. I believe it actually gives you a little notification up at the top right there, right? Or, you know, over, you know, that way if you're watching this sideways. I don't know. You have to say really quickly, I do plan on doing some collaborations. I do plan on the off season of reviewing mini golf courses and simulators, and I have an idea. I have I actually have two ideas, and I'm gonna I'm gonna post uh, the first idea. I already posted, and people actually liked it, so I'm gonna say it here. I want to play an abandoned golf course. There's a golf course that's about 20 minutes away from where I live that has been abandoned for four years now. And if anybody who's watching this is in the area or has played in this area, you know what course I'm talking about. I want to go on there kind of as a joke. So if you guys like that idea, hit like. Let me know what you think. Another thing that I want to do, and I actually got inspiration from Whitney. There was a poster that was next to the bathroom that said the Dream 18. So I figured that what I want to do is I want to figure, I want to get your guys' idea and I'm going to post this on Facebook and I'm going to post this everywhere else on all the, the golf pages that I'm part of. If you guys can put together the perfect golf course, all 18 holes, and you can take holes from different courses and put them together, what would you put together? I'm going to get opinions. I'm going to put polls up, surveys, all that stuff. Uh... And I want to try that. I also want to go back to the CSGA page and see what holes they were ranking as the hardest holes because I think that would be an interesting course as well. That Those two would be montages. I'll kind of like take the scores of those and add them all up and figure out what the, you know, what the, the par of those would be. I'm pretty sure most of them would be par fives if I'm not mistaken. I know I've played some of them, but let's, let's do that. If you like the idea, hit the like button down below. Guys, I'm Chris with CT Golf Reviews. This wraps up Season 1. I will see you next time.